Islam, one of the world's three great monotheistic traditions, along with Judaism and Christianity, the fastest growing of the three. While Muslims, like Jews and Christians, have always focused on an external God, there have always been a small number of Muslims who attempt a more personal, direct experience of divine reality. Known as Sufis, their observances go far beyond the usual outer forms of Islam and include ceremonies and rituals designed to provoke a mystical union with God. One such ritual is the zikr, a circular ceremony performed by a group of Sufi followers known as dervishes. Lex Hickson is a practicing Muslim and a professor and explores the Sufi Islamic tradition of meditation on the Quran, the holy book which for the Muslim is God's revealed word to his people. Hickson's book, The Heart of the Quran, attempts to reveal more of the spiritual tradition of Islam and to reveal it as a, as a unifying rather than a fragmenting force in the world. The material for this program was videotaped at the mosque in New York known as Masjid El Farah. The heart of the Quran is the the power that flows through the book. It's it's a it's not a verbal thing. It's not a conceptual thing. It's something which is alive. And when you hear the Quran chanted in Arabic, you can feel that heart beating inside of your heart. As members of the Judeo-Christian world. Most of us have sought refuge in the Holy Bible as our source for religious values. In the Islamic world, however, it is the Holy Quran which lies at the heart of religious belief and practice. Today, the Islamic community consists of some 900 million persons and is rapidly growing. And yet most Westerners who are aware of Islam see the reverence for the Prophet Muhammad as the inexplicable survival of a violent and chaotic desert tribe. Within much of Islam, however, Muhammad's revelation is seen as a healing knowledge within the human heart and mind. It is for this reason that the Holy Quran is at the center of Muslim life, faith, and practice. The Quran is 6,666 verses. It was revealed during 23 years to the Prophet Muhammad in the deserts of Arabia in the 7th century of, the, of, of this era. The Quran is unique because it was revealed during 23 years to one person and all of these were, were immediately memorized by the community and, and very soon written down on palm leaves and therefore we have the scripture in toto whereas the, other, the New Testament was revealed over about a hundred years through many different hands, many different minds and uh, other great scriptures have been more extended historically but this scripture is like pinpointed to these 23 years so it's very vivid, very, very authentic. But Islam accepts all of the scriptures revealed. It doesn't, it doesn't consider the Quran a, a higher revelation than, than the Gospels of, of Christianity or the Torah of, of Judaism. The, the single message of Quran is always unity, unity, unity. But as we unfold it, it's kind of like a, a mathematical formula, that a mathematical formula has many, many applications. It unfolds in surprising ways. So, la ilaha illallah is the essence of Quran. That, is, that means that Allah is one. Allah, that there's not, not, no reality apart from Allah. Now, out of that principle of unity, all of the rich implications which has produced 14 centuries of Islamic culture flow, and they're, they're continuing to flow. The two main sacraments of or sacramental ceremonies of Islam 
are the prayers, which are made by men and women in straight lines facing the city of Mecca and, and Saudi Arabia. And the other ceremony is the zikr, which is a circular ceremony. When one is honored and blessed to observe an authentic ceremony of the zikr, which is often hidden in traditional Islamic societies among certain people, which are called dervishes or Sufis, one sees the dynamism of, of the zikr, which is like the waves of love in the ocean of love. The dervishes are repeating, Ya Hai, Ya Hai, which is the, uh, the Arabic word for Allah, meaning the all-living one. And one hears the waves of Hai, 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 uh, permeating the entire atmosphere. And the dervishes, or the individuals participating, feel like they've become waves in an ocean. They no longer feel like separate personalities. When the dervishes stand for the zikr, they are actually in paradise. They, are, they, they experience that they are in the bodies of the resurrection. So that they, in some sense, of course, are on this earth making the ceremony in New York City. But in another sense, they are truly in paradise in, in a very real mystical sense. The, the Quran is calling people home in that sense. The Quran is the home uh, of, of humanity. And, and by extension, all of the great scriptures, the Torah, the Gospels and others. So that the zikr, this circle of zikr is a is a environment where when you can where you can actually see the, the Quran, the sanctuary of Quran, uh, displayed before your before your eyes, your physical eyes and the eyes of your heart. So in that circle one feels at home. One feels uh, the most all of the joys of homecoming entering that circle. And that can't be experienced from looking from the outside. That can only ultimately be tasted from entering into that circle. In 1978, I met Sheikh Musafir, who came from Istanbul to this country, and we had a meeting of hearts and minds that lasted for six days and six nights. It was the most incredible sense of meeting uh, on all levels of, of, of two persons from two different cultures. Uh, I was a, a, a young man in my middle 30s, and he was, he was a mature man in his 60s. But we, we felt like ch children together, in a way, in, 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 the, in our joyous meeting, and we we experienced immense pleasure in, our, in each other's company. And this was all the blessings of, of Allah in order to open up uh, a channel for Islam to, to come deeper into Western culture. This uh, intense contact with the Sheikh, which is like contact with, with fire, and one catches on fire, gradually penetrated into me. And a few months later, I had a, a dream vision while I was awake of, of being taken to paradise and shown everything by the Prophet Muhammad and shown all the levels of being, all the, the nature of reality. And uh, it was, I was amazed by it, but when I wrote Istanbul and told the experience, they considered it very normal. And uh, there were teachings in there that, that are transmitted only orally in our order that I couldn't have read anyplace else, or I couldn't have heard anyplace else. And they were all documented in this dream vision. So it was a kind of a laboratory test of the transmission that had occurred between the Sheikh and myself. My Sheikh told me that there were as many levels of meaning in the Quran as there were, were actually the words in Quran, or even as there were letters, Arabic letters in Quran. So it's an immensely complex hierarchy of meanings and realities and realms, so that there's something in Quran which is 
pure divine guidance for everyone, no matter what level of, of maturity they're, they've reached spiritually. The book Heart of the Quran is a meditation on 148 passages from, from the holy book. And these meditations are forms of commentary, but more than that, they're, they're forms of inspiration in themselves. I use the term ultimate source to, for, to translate the, the Arabic phrase Allah. It simply means that the universe is like, are like, is like a rays from, the, from a single sun. But the difference is that uh, in, a, in the physical universe, a sun's rays never come back to it again. But the uh, Quran reveals Allah as being an infinite sun who, ray, whose rays extend as creation, but at a certain point who, who calls back its own rays, and now all of the rays of creation come back into, its, into the source. So Allah is the source and goal of the universe. In the circle of zikr, it's as if this infinite sun with all its rays is becoming manifest and the, the waves of light are flowing outward and then at a certain point they return again and when the dervishes chant the, the name Hu, 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 which is the name of the essence, at that point the rays have, have, have entered again into their source. So the whole drama of creation is reflected in this circular ceremony of the zikr. The living truth alone flows through these Arabic letters and imbues each with mystic potency. This radiant Quran guides those who accept with reverence the divine words transmitted through you, my beloved Muhammad, and the words of truth sent from the ultimate source through the prophets before you. Whoever ceases to rely on any idol, on any limited human understanding, and relies for strength solely on the limitless source has grasped the most trustworthy support the clear and indestructible essence of Islam. The Quran is a book of peace. It, it counsels people to give, give the greetings of peace to each other. Salam alaikum. And even if, if one is, is wronged or attacked, the teaching of Quran is to res respond with the, the words of peace. Salam alaikum. And that it's not, a, it's not a textbook of warfare, it's not a textbook of any sort of violence at all. In the introduction to Heart of the Quran, I asked the, the prospective readers to simply suspend their judgments about Islam, everything they may have heard, any kind of prejudicial experiences they may have had, and simply assume that Islam is one of the great wisdom traditions of humanity and, and as such do full respect. And then, with that sense of openness, one can read these meditations on passages of Quran and begin to feel uh, their power and, and, their, and their coherence and cogency. The eternal source now reveals through you, my beloved Muhammad, this sublime book of truth which confirms and safeguards the essential teaching of the Torah, the Gospel, and all the other authentic scriptures that existed before them. Thus, Jewish and Christian tradition should be accepted reverently in the light of the glorious Quran that descends gracefully through you. If each spiritual nation practices faithfully the path revealed through its own holy prophets, then all humanity will return together to the source of love. My beloved, never allow your people to be drawn away from the fundamental principle of divine unity. Christianity and Islam are like the most intimate brother traditions. Uh, both the Prophet Muhammad and, and the Messiah Jesus are considered ultimate 
examples of love and mercy. So that the heart of, of Christianity is mercy, the heart of, of Islam is mercy. It's interesting that the two largest bodies of believers on the planet, Muslims and Christians, each having approximately one billion members in their mystic bodies, uh, are both traditions which acknowledge the Messiah Jesus. Both Islam and Christianity acknowledge the Messiah Jesus. Messiah is a word which is used in Quran for Jesus. Now there are some differences of opinion about the uh, about the mysterious spirit, the spiritual mystery which is expressed through Jesus and through through Muhammad and all of these great divine manifestations. There are theological differences, but it is amazing to think that these two great huge bodies of believers both acknowledge Jesus. So that this is a, this would be a starting point for 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 a sense of harmony. And the 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 Muslim regards Jesus upon him be peace as the as as the uh, intimate spiritual companion of of the prophet Muhammad upon him be peace they feel that they that these two great souls are together and are are in harmony the Quran doesn't contain any words of the prophet Muhammad so therefore the Quran is very oriented to Allah it's, it's, it, these are the words of God they came through the blessed instrument of the prophet Muhammad the so no one is, is expected to worship the Prophet Muhammad or, or exalt him to uh, some divine level. He, Quran itself described him as a, uh, simply a human being like other human beings. The world peace would be vastly advanced if Jews and Christians would simply accept the Prophet Muhammad as a, as a genuine prophet, as a genuine messenger of God. Because then this, the prophetic process, which manifested as Moses and manifested as Jesus, could be seen as continuing to manifest through, through Muhammad, and that we would have between these three great uh, traditions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, a harmony which would be extremely helpful beyond the situation in the Middle East. It would be helpful for the whole planet. The Quran never implies that the other great traditions have to go out of existence are, 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 are somehow superseded. The boundaries between the different religions are something that Allah himself maintains. And in the Quran, Allah says, the differences between my great revelations will be known only at the end of time. And then I myself will explain these differences, which implies that we shouldn't try to rationalize or intellectualize about the differences between the great traditions. We should simply respect them all and, and live in, have them live in harmony together. So Quran is, a, is the banner of harmony. It shows the direction of, of living in harmony, but it doesn't necessarily imply converting everyone into Muslim. The, everyone already has the human heart, which is the, which is the crown of creation and which is the, uh, a believing heart, and that this, this is the gift of God, and that, that, that Muslims are supposed to demonstrate this in the world, just as Jews and Christians should demonstrate this in the world. La ilaha illallah, the essence of Quran, which literally in Arabic means there is no God other than God, is really a statement that God is the only reality that what we think of as creation or the world exist only in God. They, they have no separate reality. They're nothing apart from God. So the, God is the only reality, the only life. Our life and the life of all the creatures are, are expressions of that divine life. So that it, it's very, very important to know that, that Allah is not located in heaven or on earth or any place inside the creation, that the creation is located inside the heart of God. The heart of the Quran is like a mystical commentary on Quran. It is definitely not just staying with the surface of the Quran. It's going under the surface. The Quran contains parables, contains many indirect teachings so that it, it's a hidden book of truth. Quran, in fact, refers to itself in Arabic as a, as a hidden book of truth. 
so that one can understand these parables on on many different levels. There is a there is a directness about Quran. There, we don't consider that there are any myths in Quran. Uh, we don't consider really that there are any there's any theology in a certain sense in the Quran. There's a kind of a direct expression of unity and the submission of 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 one's life to the source of life. So that in that sense, it it appears as a possibly a very simple book, but but that simplicity is really something very radical. And inside that simplicity is hidden many mysteries. The the Quranic path has has five main principles to it: la ilaha illallah, which means the affirmation of divine unity; the five times a day prayer, which basically is a sense of constant prayerfulness; the act of chari- acts of charity and kindness to all beings, and the the pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina once in one's lifetime, and finally the the month of Ramadan, which happens uh, every every year, uh, a 30-day period of of prayer and fasting. <laughs> Hafiz Isan, who is a man who knows Quran by heart, he's a cantor or a chanter of Quran, and he, he's known it since he was a little child. So it's just as natural to him as his breathing. And here at the Masjid Al Farah in New York City, he conducts the prayers and he gives the call to prayer, and that is that is the universal call to prayer, which which comes with f- five times a day as the sun moves through the sky. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the transcendent. Allah transcends all of the limited concepts that human beings could possibly have about Him for all, for, for all future. No matter how sophisticated human beings become, the divine reality is always going to be greater, is always going to be more transcendent. So that is the essence of the call to prayer. And then the second and third lines are the actual call to come to the prayers. But the main emphasis is Allahu Akbar, which is, which is this absolute affirmation of the divine mystery, of the divine integrity of the divine unity, which can never be, can never be exhausted and can never be penetrated by the human intellect. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. I am dressed now as I was dressed by my grand sheikh and he always says that that human beings can can beautify the external of someone but only Allah most high only God the mighty one can beautify the inner nature of a person so that these these are the symbols of our mystic path the the green robe is symbolic of the uh, of the of the green radiance of the prophet Muhammad upon him be peace his healing and enlightening energy the the uh, dervish jacket is is uh, symbolic of a of a of a wandering fakir, a poor one, who who has who has nothing to call his own. The uh, med- the medallion which which has the the green and gold turban of our order in the middle of it, and which and the various st- statements from the Quran, such as La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, in Arabic around it. Uh, the the prayer beads, which uh, are symbolic of every breath. We, we repeat the one of the beautiful names of God with every breath, consciously and unconsciously, waking and sleeping. The hat, which which it represents the crown that one receives in paradise, uh, as as Saint Paul, the great Christian saint, has said in his letters about someone who's passed away that they've run the race, they've and they're now going to receive their crown. This is the crown that which is talked about in that. And it's it's symbolically given on this earth because the the Sufis or the dervishes or the mystics of Islam are those who manifest paradise here on this earth in order to to bring great enthusiasm to people and make make people realize that that paradise really exists and it can and, and it can be reflected in this world and it's not just a matter of blind faith or, or a speculation. Composing over a period of ten years the heart of the Quran and meditating on it uh, 
while I was in the month of Ramadan, fasting from sunrise to sunset, meditating on it with my own spiritual community, praying, discussing. My, my single hope throughout the whole thing has been that the, that the Quran would become loved by, by humanity. Not in the sense of converting to Islam, but in the sense of loving it. And then out of that love, some of the mysteries which are contained in it would, would come forth. And so that when we, when we pray, with, with every breath we, we affirm La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The, the esoteric meaning of that is that unity, that, that reality is unity itself. And that Muhammad, by this meaning the human being, is the principle of revelation of that unity. Allahumma <laughs> Ya Muzaffar Jirahi, Ya Allahu.